Hello everyone. In the previous video, I have explained 1929 Great Economic Depression and its impact on the economy with reference to gross national product, unemployment, stock market, world production and world trade volume. And then I have explained two important components that paved the way for post-war welfare state. The first one is for this mode of production and the second one is Keynesian policies. In terms of Keynesian policies, we explained why government is needed in the economy. And he explained that if there is no government expenditures, we cannot increase aggregate demand. So people's demands cannot be effective. Yes, you may want to buy something. You demand to buy a product or a service, but you cannot afford to buy this. That means your demand is not effective. How could it be possible to make it effective? If you have a disposable income, your demand could be effective. In order to have a disposable income, you need to be employed. In order to be employed, a job should be created, a factory should be set up. Since private investment cannot set up new factories, another actor is needed, which is government. Government is doing so by increasing government expenditures. Firstly, they set up state economic enterprises to increase the public investment. So they create more employment and more disposable income for people to consume. And government expenditures can also be used for subsidizing people or for increasing social expenditures such as insurance, health and education. That means, according to Keynes, we need to increase government expenditure to stimulate the economy. Although I could not verify that this sentence belongs to Keynes, nevertheless, in the internet surfing, I come up with this sentence and I like this. It shows the logic of Keynesian policies. Even if there is no job, government should create a job. What sort of a job, for example? Government should pay people to dig holes in the ground and then fill them up. So even if there is no job, government should hire somebody to dig holes in the ground and should hire somebody else to fill them up, to stimulate the economy. And thanks to Keynesian and for this policy, thanks to mass production, goods and services such as refrigerator, washing machine, telephone, energy, transportation, etc., used by only minorities before, began to be used by majorities of the people. The amount of energy used in the industries tripled during the Golden Age until 1973. When it comes to social problems such as rate of unemployment, it decreased immensely to 1.5%. Workmen could plan their holidays, could plan to spend their holidays in the lullabies of Europe, including Turkey. And they could plan to buy a new car thanks to their capacity to purchase because that was increasing. We call this era as a kind of compromise among state capital and laborers. Standards of living of laborers was gradually increasing due to pay rise. Productivity and profits of capitalists and their firms were simultaneously rising. Tax tax rate, tax revenue of the state was increasing. Therefore, great compromise has been set out during the golden years. Until when? Until the oil crisis. OPEC increased oil prices about 300%, from $3 to $12. According to Phillips, there is a trade-off between inflation and unemployment rate. And according to Keynes, priority should be given to the unemployment rate. 
but there was something missing in the economy. Not only inflation rate, but also unemployment rate were increasing simultaneously, which we call stagflation. So oil crisis paved the way for stagflation. So Keynesian policies fell out of fashion. Let's come back to Phillips curve and stagflation. According to Phillips curve, we have inflation rate and unemployment rate. We can choose, for example, higher inflation rate for the sake of lower unemployment. This is the choice of social democrats. But there is another policy option which became popular, especially after 1973. You prefer lower inflation rates against higher unemployment rates. So that was the choice of neoliberals. After the oil crisis, neoliberal policies became popular. As you can see here, in 1973, unemployment rate was 5% in the US, and inflation rate was approximately 8%. All of a sudden, in 1974, we see almost 6% unemployment rate, so it increased. And also, inflation rate was also increased in 1974 with 12%, which we call this Phillips curve shift. So that is the stagflation. Demand-oriented policies of Keynes were abandoned. Instead, supply-side fiscal policy was adopted, especially in 1979 and 1980, with Reagan in the United States and with Thatcher in the United Kingdom. Neoliberal policies became popular. One of the first policies they implemented was tax cuts. Why tax cuts became very popular? Because they wanted private initiatives, private entrepreneurs to invest in the economy. In order to promote them, they wanted to decrease tax rate. Because according to Laffer curve, as you can see, if you increase tax rates, Revenue, tax revenue of state will decrease. So entrepreneurs are not promoted to invest in the economy if you increase the tax rate. Since it's a supply side economics, this time not state, but private initiatives are expected to invest in the economy. And secondly, Thatcher and Reagan implemented deregulation and privatization policies. So they wanted state to step back from the economy. They were against interference of state in the economy. And it affected public administration theory as well. Especially after Thatcherism and Reaganism, managerial perspective and a general approach to public administration became popular. We will see new public management in the future. So the logic of new public management lies here, lies in the crisis of 1973 oil crisis and developments afterwards. Thank you for listening. See you later.